LCP to color akan dibawakan instruksinya oleh Dr. Aaron Aaron from NUH please thank you good morning everyone uh, Dr. Aaron Gunn I'm from uh, my consultant hand surgeon from NUH uh, I'm up in the region so so I'm just going to talk to you today about uh, the new uh, variable angle plate which is just introduced here I've been using this plate in Singapore for five years. We have this plate since 2009. So I'm just going to share with you some of the experiences we have. So just a brief, his, a brief uh, uh, introduction. This radius fracture is uh, bimodal in age distribution. It happens in young patients, motorcycle accidents, skateboarding, things like that. And also in the old patients, osteoporosis, you know, they fall down and, and they, they break their, their, their wrist. It's the most common wrist injury that we see um, and 20 to 30 percent of all the distal radius fractures undergo operation. Not all, okay? Most of them under, uh, are, 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 are treated conservatively. So, about 20 to 30 percent go for surgery. This is a classification that we use, uh, AO classification. Um, in order to uh, restore the normal x ray parameters, you need to know what they are. So, when you fix distal radius fractures, you try to achieve uh, restoration of a radial length of 11 millimeters a radial inclination of 22 degrees and a volar angulation of 10 degrees. If you get an angulation of neutral, I think it's very acceptable if you're fixing radius fractures. Who goes for surgery? Uh, I will operate on all the open distal radius fractures uh, to deprive the wound. Uh, if it's suitable for immediate fixation, I usually fix them immediately. If not, we will stage the fixation. Neurological deficit, patients with median nerve symptoms, I'll operate on them, do a couple tunnel release, at the same time I'll also fix the radius. Patients with closed fractures and they have been manipulated, they reduced and put in a cast or put in a slab and they're not stable, they, if they collapse, I will counsel the patient for, for fixation. So this implant that we are going to introduce to you today is based on the three column theory. So this implant fixes both the radial and intermediate column simultaneously in using one plate. It is anatomical, means that it sits on the volar cortex of the radius nicely flush to the cortex. Which means if you put it in the correct position, you can reduce the fracture onto the plate and you should get a perfect reduction. Okay? The distal row of screws, the distal row of screws are locking. And the special uh, feature of this plate is that you can, you can lock it in variable angle means that you can choose to aim the screw in either way with a 15 degree range of motion and still have the screw lock onto the plate. So that's a special feature of this plate. One thing I like about this plate is that there are holes for you to put K-wires to hold the plate onto the bone while you're adjusting the fracture side to put the screws in. So that's also a very useful feature. So surgical technique, I think all of you know the same uh, surgical technique, usual uh, modified Henry approach. Go through the FCR, move the FCR laterally, uh, honorly, and move the radial artery, artery radially. Move the FPL tendon to the ulnar side, expose the pronated quadratus, cut the pronated quadratus, and raise with the parallel stem to expose the fracture side. In some of the, in a, a lot of the fractures uh, here, in this, in this particular stage, what I do is I also release the brachial radialis insertion because that holds, that keeps pulling the radial fragment down and, and it's very irritating. So by releasing that radial, brachial radialis tendon insertion, insertion, it helps with the reduction. At the same time, I will also do this. Once I reach this stage, I will use a bone clamp and I will move, I will actually open up the fracture site and release the soft tissue that's holding the dorsal side of the distal fragment so that you can reduce the distal fragment back up to the normal height. If you don't do that, you can pull and pull and pull, it will not reduce, okay? So that's also a very important key step. So then you will manually reduce the fracture. Once you are happy with the height and position, you look at the volar cortex and you see that the volar cortex now is very smooth and you get a nice uh, height. You temporarily fix it using a K-wire from the radial styloid obliquely down to the shaft. Then you check your x-ray to make sure you are happy with the position. 
Once you are happy with the position, you place the plate onto the roller side, and this hole, this sliding hole, you fill with a non-locking screw. And this allows you to adjust the plate up and down. Okay? The next thing I do is I put a K wire in the outer hole, like so, and then you check the X-ray to see whether your plate is in the right position. This this K wire will tell you the position of the screws that you're gonna put on the outer side. Exactly the same direction. So if this K wire is in the joint, take it out, move the plate approximately, and do the same thing and check again. Once you're happy with the position of the plate, the screw placement will be like so. So this is the first screw you put, non-locking. Number two screw is the most on the side. You put a locking screw without any variable angle. So this set has a drill guide which has two ends. This is non-variable angle which is fixed angle. And this cone is the variable angle drill guide. You have to place these, uh, these ends of the drill guide uh, properly into the into the plate before you drill it because if it's not fixed properly it means that the position is wrong okay so using this side I would drill this hole this hole this hole and this hole and these are all fixed angle uh, I would normally use fixed angle screws the variable angle screw, screw will be the variable angle uh, a hole I would use uh, on the radial styloid fragment and I would aim the screw towards the tip of the radial style. This gives a very nice uh, 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 fixation to the distal radius. And then I will fix, I'll put uh, one or two uh, locking screws. I will usually use the shorter plate. Uh, you can use the longer one if you have some combining, some fractures that go down the shaft. This is the most important view, the 20 degree tilted lateral. If you use a regular lateral view, uh, to check your implants, you, you won't know whether the screws are in the joint. You can't tell. All you need to do is lift up the hand 20 degrees and you'll be able to see the joint line very clearly and that the screws are just placed upon radial. This is the perfect position that you want to take. This screw is the radial styloid screw. So it looks as if it's long but it is long. The other thing you have to make sure of is that the, screw do, the, the screws do not penetrate the dorsal cortex. So when you're measuring the screw for the distal row, minus two millimeters, minus two. Okay, so in general, it's about maximum 20, 20 millimeters to 22. If you get 24, you better check again. Something is wrong. In the Asian hand, you don't get 24. It's always 20 or 22. And the radial styloid screw is 14 or 16. You get anything longer than that, just take 14 or 16, okay? So these are some of my cases. I'm just gonna demonstrate. Uh, the use of the Vola rotor plate. This one has a subluxation of the Vola ring, of the, of the Vola uh, fragment of the distal radius together with the cuppers, and there's a hole in the articular surface there. So, using the variable angle plate, as you can see, this hole I always aim towards the radial star, right? The rest of them are fixed angle. Okay? And then two screws, one not locking on the oval hole, which allows me to adjust it. Once I'm happy, I will tighten it, and then I'll put a locking screw. Two holes at the shaft is enough. This is an AO uh, C2 fracture, dorsally angulated, dorsal carbonation. Again, I use this plate. Okay, I chose to use a five hole plate, which is slightly broader. This patient's a bit bigger. Okay, usually the standard plate we use. The standard plate we use is the four hole plate, four holes. Can you see one, two, three, four? You don't use the five hole unless it's a Caucasian patient or a bullet or a very big male, okay? So in this particular patient, you can see I left this hole empty because this hole is on the fracture line. I do not feel this one. So instead of filling this hole, I use the proximal uh, locking, uh, proximal row locking hole. You can use this hole to add uh, additional stability. But if you don't require this hole, you can leave it empty. These two holes can be empty. For example, this one, I purposely put this hole to catch this fragment here. There's another extra fragment. So this hole, I purposely fill to catch this fragment. 
And because there's a split down here, I would like to make sure this uh, fixation is more stable. I added an extra locking screw here. So, non-locking screw, locking screw, and locking screw. Check again that none of the screws protrude beyond the dorsal cortex. That's very important. If not, you have problems like rupture of the nuclear tendon because of attrition. Again, another AOC2 fracture. So, this particular fracture has a, has a loose fragment here. Can you see? This dorsal ulnar rim. This is the most important fragment actually in the distorated fracture. This is a fixed angle screw on the ulnar side. This particular screw here, I used a variable angle and I directed it to catch this particular fragment. Okay? And uh, this one is fixed angle. This is variable angle again to catch the radio startup fragment. So there's only one screw here catching this radio startup fragment, but it's quite stable. Again, none of the screws penetrate the dorsal cortex. And I have just two screws in the shaft. This is a very badly dorsally angulated uh, distal radius fracture. Uh, this is another example of having a standard very wide angle clip. Right? This one, special case. Can you see that? This is a very difficult fracture to fix. Which one to fix first? Fix the radius first. Because the radius is fixed with the patient lying down on a hand table. Once you have fixed this and it's stable, you put the patient up this way and then you approach the ulnar from the ulnar side. Okay? In this particular patient, I use this 2.4 straight plate. I cut the tip and I bend it to make a hook. I hook over the uh, tip of the ulnar style. <laughs> Put locking screws here, and uh, this extra K wire for extra stability. The patient is doing very well. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about another plate that's going to come up after the variable angle uh, uh, locking plate. This cone. So in, in, the, in this particular fracture, you can see that the fracture line is very, very distal, very, very distal. If you put this plate on, it's going to sit maximum up to here and your screws will not catch this. What do you do? Well, one way is you can put this plate a little bit more distal, it's going to sit out of the, it's going to sit out of your, uh, above your, your, your bone. But Synthes has already designed a juxta articular uh, variable angle plate. This is called the volar lip plate. It's not here yet, but uh, this one addresses that, that problem. So you can put the plate really, really distal, and all these are variable angle locking screws as well. Okay, so there is a solution for that problem. And um, a lot of people uh, comment that this plate, this plate is very uh, prominent and you are afraid of the tendons rubbing away. But this plate is designed such that it's a very nice smooth contour. So I've never had to remove this plate. This is, it works very well. Again, another very badly, uh, it's very distal. This part of the fracture line is very distal. You can't, this, this plate is not going to use, it's not going to fix it. I use, and, and it's a lot of dorsal comminutions here. You can see that this, X, this CT scan looks at the, uh, these cuts are looking at the dorsal fragments on the radial side. As you can see, it's all powder. And this <laughs> cuts show, it's crazy, right? It's horrible, right? But, look at that. This is a very nice fixation using this plate because it goes really distal. I can, I can put the screws right to the back without penetrating the dorsal cortex and, it's, and it supports the joint nicely. So this plate is really good. So you can, once you're used to using the variable angle technology, I think Synthes will bring in this plate for you to use uh, in the future. But you can also use the, the current uh, Juxta articular plate for the same purpose. It's just that you cannot variable uh, angle the screws. Uh, this one you can. So this is just my usual post-op uh, regime. I see the patients five days after the surgery. I lighten the dress. So after surgery, I'll put them on a plaster slab on the roller side for five days just to rest. And then after that, they come back to the clinic. We lighten the dressings. We put them on a plastic splint or a, a wrist brace and I send them to the hand therapist for flexion extension exercises. After about two weeks, they'll start to do four weeks to start with active uh, proto-supination. And then six weeks onwards, they take off the spleen, they start strengthening. By two to three months, we are back to normal uh, activities. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? The placement of the drill uh, sleeve has to be fixed perfectly into the groove such that it sits rigidly onto the plate. And the drill 
and the drill is placed in the hole and you're allowed to bear, uh, and, and, and you drill a variable angle screw by, bear, by angling the drill bit as according to the direction that you want. This part of the drill guide sits rigidly onto the plate like so and only the drill bit moves around the variable angle hole. There's one fixing one direction. So it has to be like that. For every hole you can do But you have to be sitting there. You have to sit in perfectly. The first one is that. So first one I drill this hole. So I adjust up and down. This left, right, like that, right? And then the first hole is all not number two, number three, number four, and then number five I variable angle. So all this, all this one I use the fixed angle, like that. Fixed angle again, you must put it in the correct. You have to sit it correctly, nicely. Then you put, then you drill the hole like this. This is this is straight, right? This is neutral, neutral, neutral. There's no variable angle. So I will use this one for one, two, three, four, and the last one I will use the phone. Yeah. Again, you must make sure this is fixed in the right <laughs> position like that. See? It goes in too tight. And then you put the variable and towards the radial slide. <laughs> Kemudian, kemudianlah dua puluh. Saya tak punya. Kemudian, kemudian.